Hey guys, welcome to part two of the Service Without Excuses podcast. We're also and still here at All States Restoration English Town, New Jersey. I'm with my man Al. We're going to talk about um, some of the um, technical aspects of the job. Al has been with them for a few years now, and he is. Uh, he's got the gift of the gab, as we call it in the Irish, and we're able to, to talk about some different things and explain, you know, some of how the technicians should look at it when they go into a house and work with a customer. And right from the get-go, when the first call goes out, they may be the person that's the point person or somebody else is the point person, and you're the first person they physically see in the house. So that's kind of important. So, Al, explain a little bit of them about you yourself, first and foremost. Excellent. My name's Al. I'm born and raised Perth Amboy, New Jersey. Uh, parents were immigrants from Calabria, Italy. Um, you know, started off like everyone else, warehouse work. From that, I got an AV gig and traveled for a while, did some conventions. And then from that, I got into bail bonds. Um, and then from there, I found myself here at All States Restoration. Well, one thing you said that's a commonality is every bit of it, it has to do with communication. Absolutely. So if you start out from just, you know, going out there and doing audiovisual stuff in the first place, you got to have the communication skills in order to get the message from this to that. Totally. So that that's very very important, I know, and and it bail bonds obviously communication skills are also one hundred percent. You will develop them. <laughs> I, I, I'd imagine they're very important. And detail is the devil's in the detail. I, I'm sure when it comes to that. But there's that, and then of course here at All States Restorations. All States is a company in Central New Jersey that provides high quality, high level disaster restoration services, both in fire, water, and smoke. I should say both all fire, water, and smoke. And uh, does a great job cleaning up, does it right standard. In the first part of the podcast, we talked uh, more about the um, what you should expect, the difference between uh, an insurance company that has provided a, a leader to you. And this one we're going to talk more about, and this is more geared toward business owners or managers or technicians, whatever that happens to be. He's in the senior level of it here. So he's going to talk to you about what the technician should be doing in the house when it comes to the job or the business, whatever it happens to be, and the level of service from the get-go. Again, you're the first person they see, so you're Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I just like to show a professional, shirt tucked in, um, booties on, gloves, obviously your PPE, especially nowadays. I mean, we were doing that previous to COVID, but obviously now more than ever. Um, and just being professional, um, giving the customer all your attention, being classy. Um, being a gentleman, <clears throat> you're in somebody's home, you need to respect their home, you want to protect their floors, and kind of just treat it like it's your own, same way you just treat everybody. You know, I know Rob a little bit, but I already treat him like a brother, because that's how I feel in life. The only way to be happy is to be like that. Everybody's connected. So, you know, it, it is. There's a know. truth to it, because everything you do is communication. And mm -hmm. today, communication's changed. Um, you know, I didn't have cell phones when I was a kid. I didn't have any of that stuff. So we, you know, computer was, I won't get into how big the computer was or what it was, but they're long since obsolete now. And a communication is done through multiple levels. Uh, we talked about reviews and the importance of it in the first place, but communication now is done both digitally. So it could be a text message to the customer, let them know you're coming there. Absolutely. Uh, could be a text message to a fellow technician explaining what needs to get done on a job site. Um, but it's also verbal communication. And of course, they, they call it a punch list. Well, punch list isn't really on a piece of paper anymore. It's, it's you know, we're way, yeah. we're way past that. Now we have something in writing for two reasons. Number one, if you lose that paper, you'll lose the punch list. Number two, I can prove that I sent it to you. <laughs> so I think that's pretty important that everybody's on the same page because yeah. you can see what it is. Um, when you get into a home and you're dealing with a customer, um, obviously, they don't understand the technical. We talked about that briefly in the previous podcast. Yeah. Um, they don't, they just know something's messed up in the house yeah. could be a fire could be water damage they're in a traumatic situation they're already on edge in the first place because something the norm is out the window and i think people now are going to be a little more versed to the normals out the window after covid but it, right. it's still going to be a big part of it so explain to them a little bit more about how that goes that that transaction i mean basically you get onto a scene and you you want to educate the customer you know you kind of put yourself in their position there's going to be things that happen to you and there's professionals that come and assist you and things that you have you know you have no idea if it's a paramedic that arrives you don't know what he's doing checking vitals you have no idea what that is so you kind of just want to explain to them you know educate them what's going on you know so especially if it's a disaster and a water loss sometimes those things happen once in a lifetime so you kind of get there and i kind of approach it from meeting their needs i'm not there to sell them anything um i want them to see that they we're there for them. You know what I mean? There's nothing for me to sell because I'm there to meet your needs. And it's almost like you need me more than I need you. Honestly, I don't know how, if that sounds bad, Rob, but that's no, how it I sounds a hundred percent right. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, 
you're there to provide a service for them. And they got to know that you're seen as the expert. You're the person in the house doing the job. Exactly. You are, you are uh, their saving grace, so to speak, uh, when it comes to handling a job. I spent 25 years of disaster restoration. So I've seen everybody from people that were hugging me when I walked in the door to people that were, I won't repeat what they wanted, what they were trying to do, but they were cursing at me out the door. Right. Somehow I caused the problem and I didn't. But, you know, right. you, you know, the ups and downs, especially mm-hmm. with the mood swings of, of a disaster. Um, when you're going into a house and, and you're, you're, you're dealing with a situation, you're obviously assessing the entire job. And that's key. I, I heard, and I, Sean can attest to this. I've had people tell me they went out and had companies come in and look at a job, a restoration job, let's say a water damage. Mm-hmm. They didn't even pull a meter out. Yep. They didn't look. Forget about the meter. They didn't even know where to look to look for the meter. So they went in the house, looked around, did a little, I guess, sniff test to say, what do they smell? And would tell them, yeah, it's it's, it's five thousand dollars to fix the job. Now I don't. I know a lot of good contractors and people out there, but mm-hmm. I've been, and I've been doing it for a while. But I can't eyeball something without doing some tests. And, and it's two reasons for it. I don't know what's wrong. Think about this: you go in and you get your car worked on. Mm-hmm. You drive in and you tell the mechanic, "Yeah, my car's not working." What's the first thing he's going to ask? Well, what's wrong with it? Mm-hmm. So you say, "Well, it doesn't work." Right. And they're like, "Okay, so what doesn't work about it?" Same thing with a doctor. Mm-hmm. They, there's no magic ball here. They no. have to know the information you're, you're giving them. So if you're more forthcoming, if the customer is more forthcoming and give, them the, give everything detail, if they say it's been five days since it was wet, they need to know it's been five days. If it's been a day, it's a day. Mm-hmm. But at least you're covering all the bases so when it comes to it. I would imagine that's, that's extremely important in Absolutely. the whole process. Absolutely. Um, so um, what are some of the things that you can tell a fellow technician, a fellow person that's in the field, that you notice that you probably now versus a couple of years ago know more about something they should look out for the house, something they they should be aware of when they're going into a customer's home. Maybe they're missing it, and that ultimately leads to um, something negative on the customer side that is really not anything you did wrong or they did wrong. It's just mm-hmm. they don't understand. What's something that really sticks out? Um, that's a good question. Mm. I have to think about that for a second. Um, I tend to ask them. <laughs> I, I tend. I usually, all the podcasts are usually thirty minutes or less, and the, the point is to get to the exact question. So you'll say something that will judge judge my standpoint. But I'll I'll go into as an example from my, from from my standpoint. Um, dirty shoes. Yeah. Walking into the house, they got a disaster already on their mm-hmm. hands, and you walk in with a bunch of mud on the shoes because you just walked out of somebody's house and you had to pull a pump out of the basement because you were pumping out the water, mm-hmm. and you didn't realize it. You got in, got in your truck, you're walking around, you walk in the yeah. house, and you got a big old mud trail right down to the basement where they have another flood. That is a a big uh, can be a very big problem, I, I would imagine. Um, when it comes to uh, just the front experience, um, we were talking about it before. Everything before is a reason. Everything afterwards is an excuse. excuse. So you tell yeah. them to get in. Yeah. We're going to be the professional. But yeah. the professional walked in with uh, look like he just went bear trapping in the woods. Yeah. Again, with the whole conversation of treat it like it's your own home. I mean, if you're going to walk into your own home like that, then I, I probably wouldn't want you on my team. <laughs> it is. It's a true. <laughs> I'm and, sorry to say I wouldn't. You know, you know, and, and another thing, too, that that's a big point of, of security. Yep. And I don't know how you guys do it, but um, I know one of the things that I used to do is I, I went to badges. But if I didn't have badges, the guys came from the house, whatever, mm-hmm. we would qualify and say, hey, blank and blank are coming to your home. Yep. So they would know who's walking yeah. in the door, I would imagine, immediately. Yeah. I mean, what we want to start doing here, what we've been doing in the past, is sending a profile with the whole social media craze and everybody's on social media. Send them a picture with a little bio. This is Al. This is him and his son. This is Anthony. This is him and his fiance. Like just to get to know, be personal. You're coming into people's homes. I'm not comfortable letting anybody into my home. A hundred percent. I think about it. My wife wouldn't want somebody in the house and I have to say who it is. Now I'm pretty, pretty tough on. So if somebody comes in the house and, and I don't know them, I'm going to have a discussion with them ahead of time to get a feel for it. Of I've been going into homes, thousands of homes over the years and meeting with thousands of different people. And I don't have any prejudgment against them. I just want to know who's walking in my door and Absolutely. could be a potential problem. I know there's been problems in the past with, with things. Um, so I think safety is really important, understanding mm-hmm. that. How do you feel social media, since you're definitely more of the age and expertise than I am about that? I, I like to say I know enough, just enough, not even to be dangerous, just enough. But what do you, how important do you think the presence of social media when a, when a company, a service company comes in and does your house, how important do you think that is? Well, it's kind of, to me, it's kind of similar with like music nowadays. It's just like Little Wayne put out 10 mixtapes last week alone. You know what I mean? It's just constant content. It's the same thing with social media. It's all about content, daily story posting, um, just keeping everybody in tune and kind of like not doing the same thing always kind of mixing it up a little bit, but you know, everybody's connected through social media. I just, I don't know how many 
six, five billion people have Facebook or whatever the number is. Oh, it's insane. It's insane. So it's like everybody has it. Everybody's comfortable with communicating like that. Most people nowadays only communicate through through social media. You know, they'll I, see you in person and not talk to you. But you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's, like, the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah. I'm writing a book right now based on reviews and reviews being the future. And, and what I talk about in the book is an example. When I first moved to New York, I moved to Long Island and I didn't know where to eat where to get food, where to get laundry done, anything. Mm -hmm. And when I moved there, I said, I gotta, I, I can't keep asking my partner. He's not from here. New York is a big area. So you're looking at going, where do I go? And I went to Yelp. Now I'm not a huge fan of Yelp, but I am a huge fan of real information. So I trusted people that I don't know that I'm never going to meet, never did meet to tell me that the food at this particular place was really good. Uh, grocery was good here. You need to go clothes shopping, go here based on reviews. And like a lot of people in reviews and people don't think about this. They assume that people go for the top reviews mm -hmm. and there is some merit for that. They certainly don't want to go for the number one star. They want to go for number five star, but they're going to look at both sides. They're going to look at it and say, okay, not everybody's a five star. In fact, I don't want my business to be a five star. Some people go, whoa, that's crazy. Why mm -hmm. would you not want you or your technicians to be seen as a five star uh, service provider. I don't because it's fake. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because you're different than me. Exactly. He's different than everybody's different. So everybody's got a different perspective on it. There are people in this world that will never give a five-star review. Right. They're just not five-star review just, people. Exactly. It's hard for me to do it, but yeah. people have done it. Yeah. But you, you're not going to have it. So you're dealing with the different people all the time and understanding the communication skills between the understanding that it's very important to do your research, to find things online, to get new information, mm -hmm. new content that's online. I couldn't even fathom it. And, and when you're looking at reviews, looking at information, it's vital to see it. And, and one of the things that drives me nuts is with my company, I have multiple employees. So I have, they'll say Rob came in, then they'll say uh, Jim came in, then they'll say Jake came in. Well, I want to see Jake more than Rob, more than Rob's name on there because I want to see they're doing the job right. I already assume if I own the company, I should be doing something right. Maybe, exactly. and I pray that they're doing it better than me. That's awesome. Right. However, um, you know, you want to see different people, and you can kind of relate to them. You know, in a house. So when you're looking up a review, say you're thinking about hiring all states to do, you got a mold situation in the house, and you see Al was spectacular. Al was fantastic. He let us know everything that was going on. He was detail oriented. He was clean. Um, everything was awesome. You want to see that. Yep. You also want to see if people think Al's a schmuck. Yeah. Because then that's a, that's a different uh, perspective of it all together. Yep. You want to know. And the review they're getting is from people you don't know and won't have. And when we do reviews, and I think Sean does the same thing, I'm not there. They get a couple of days later. I don't even do it that same day most of the time because I want them to sit on it. Yeah. I know they're going to probably give me a good review immediately. Absolutely. Three days from now, they might go, oh, a spot came back. Yeah. That guy's an asshole. I mean, <laughs> exactly. it, it, it yeah. doesn't matter. You know, you're, you you know, know, they're going to have this input that you're somebody different than they thought. Yeah. So I think the presence of social media, the point of social credibility is very, very important. Um trying to think what else I can really ask you that I think probably would be something that would benefit. Is there something you want to go over or you, you feel that um, I, we already know all States is a great company to hire, you know, right, in the absolutely. first place, but um, what is something that sticks out? Say you were the consumer, say somebody's coming to do a job at your house. What would you look for as a, as a customer? Honesty, being, them being transparent and not trying to sell me anything that I just don't like that. I want people to just be honest, just the way I am. You know, I, I, the first thing that I tell people when I'm on site is, I have no dog in a fight. I'm here to specifically help you, whether they believe it or not. And it's it, it just just being honest and being genuine. Um, sometimes you, you have different people. Some people um, respond different. Some people are not easily impressed. No. You know what I mean? So it's no. like it's like whatever you do for them, they just they don't feel impressed. And then there's some people that can be so sweet and impressed easily, but be taken get easily be taken advantage of, you know. Right. And I kind of try to protect those type of people. And um. Like I said, I go out there, I give 110% and I'm accomplished every day. I set goals every day and I get out there and. You just said the keyword. Mm -hmm. You just said a keyword. It's called goals. And mm -hmm. goals are something that if you don't do personally. Now, by the way, if you think I'm a person that maybe has always worked for my own company, you'd be wrong. I spent 17 years working for two other companies, uh, big chains, franchises, um, some on the corporate level, uh, some of what we discussed before in the last podcast. But um, I feel that working for somebody and learning these accountability skills, mm -hmm. most owners I work with personally suck. No other word about it when it comes to accountability. They think I own the business. This mm -hmm. is the way it is. Yep. Um, this is the way that it should be because it's my business. And the problem is that they've been accountable to anybody else. You know, maybe your wife, their significant other, they were accountable to, but they're not being accountable to 
the business itself, they're being whatever they feel like doing, do as I do, don't, you know, mm -hmm. do as I say, whatever that whole saying is, right. um, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to have that in, in a sense of 17 years before I ever opened my door the first time, gave me a tremendous lesson. And when I went through a training class, I didn't know how to start a business. I managed a business. Right. I'd worked my way up the ranks and did whatever it was, mm -hmm. but I didn't run a business. So right. I didn't know how to do it. I was spending money like a drunken sailor to start it because that's what the other business did. Drugs was really stupid, mm. but you come, it comes down to the fact that you, you have to, you get up and you learn and you say, okay, I learned these skills working for somebody else. And then I got to a crossroads of my point in my life where I said, you know what? It was time either put up or shut up. And I did. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's for everybody. Doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. There are days where I even question it today because I, I like to have a nice steady paycheck at times. And when you're an entrepreneur, yeah. it, it, that's kind of a thing out the window. Of course. Um, so that, that's, uh, really th think of that. But when it comes into say, say you're, you're going in and you're applying for a job, like you did a couple of years ago when you came here, what are some of the benefits that, uh, somebody that's coming in or, or, or the business owner or manager, what should they be looking for? Cause I know it's different people, you know, bag on millennials and that's just not true. Right. Right. Uh, it's just, in fact, millennials have better work ethic than most people I know yeah. because they want purpose. They want something behind that. So that is such BS. It's insane. And, and I remember when I was a kid, my parents used to say, kids today don't have any work ethic. And right. it turns out we have work ethic. And it, it's just, it's a it's always, circle. Yeah, it's a generational yeah, it's a thing. Generational yeah. thing. But I can tell you my experience with, you know, somebody in the millennial, that they want something that has purpose. They want to make sure they're making right. a difference or doing something. Um, we just showed up and did a job and did it the best we could. Right. Because we wanted to move up or whatever the case was. We didn't have any purpose necessarily, which is commendable to mm -hmm. you guys. Yeah, of course. Uh, and what should they look for in, in that when they're hiring well, I mean, reliability, um, somebody that's willing to learn and 95% of the job is showing up. I mean, if you show up, whether you make a mistake or not, you learn from your mistakes. As long as you're willing to learn, you're reliable, you're loyal. I think those are the best qualities, you know, that's, and that's how I got this job. Yeah. And that's, that's you know? the thing you got to, if you bring it and you do it, mm -hmm. you'll get it. It's, yeah. it's, 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 to me, it's that simple. So yeah. guys, I want to thank you for joining us on episode number two. Is there anything you want to go over before we leave? No. We, I feel like we covered enough. We covered a lot of bases. And this is geared toward, again, managers, owners, technicians, whatever that happens to be. If you're going into a home, doing a business, I don't care if you're a window cleaner, restoration guy, painter, it doesn't matter. All these things that he just discussed that Al went through piece by piece with us about is things that every business owner needs to know about and, and needs to be fully aware of. And, and also anybody that applies for a job with a company, good company will accept you and help you grow and will develop you. Um, bad companies don't really care. They just going to throw you to the wolves. And, and, and I suggest they aren't great learning experiences. Uh, spend your time, go work for the right company. Uh, and, uh, and if you're hiring the right technicians, make sure you think of somebody like Al that has motivation, driven passion, Passion's a big one and, and drive and reliability. So guys, thank you so much for listening to Service Weather Excuses podcast. We will see you again soon. Thanks, brother. Appreciate Thanks it, man. Got it, bro. Had a great time, man. Too.